Hey guys, we've got some good news for you today. Fantastic news. Yes, because I can't wait. we've been hearing everything you've been saying mm -hmm. and we've settled down over here and now we are proud to announce the IMB Concierge Service. Whoop! Yeah. So our concierge service really would help you guys to support you with any problem you have in Nigeria. If you want to start up a business, you need some research done, IMB is here to help you. If you want to see your properties to be checked up on, we can also support you with that. Just anything you need. What are the things that IMB concierge service can do? Personal shopping. Woo! You know, if you've got real estate investments, you need someone to check. Have you got a shop here that you're managing from abroad? We can go and check it out for you. Do you want us to buy you a gift? There's so many things that we can do because we know it's so hard to find people to trust from abroad. That's true. And you can reach the IMB service on yes. our WhatsApp number, yes. which is plus 234-904-549. 9846. After we've paid, they now said the land start 33 plots from the express. Wow. Ha. <laughs> that's that's my I and we've paid over 25 million there. Wow. Two amazing guests in the building. Uh, so please, Toby and Toby, Mr. Toby and Mr. Toby. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the both same name. Because we just say Toby A and Toby O. Eh? How do you do that? We just we figure it out now. <laughs> That's a setup, right? Yeah, So I I need to look at my phone. I was like, which Toby do I know? I'm joking. <laughs> I, I thought I thought the real estate sector was what I talked about. I had two key guys I wanted to speak to. I know you guys have so much intelligence in this area. So please, we'd like to just introduce yourselves if you don't mind. Okay. So, of you, yeah, Toby, sure. hey, I'll go yeah. first. <laughs> All right. Toby Adama, um, Alpha Crocs Limited. Uh, Alpha Crocs is a 10-year-old real estate company. We do real estate services and development. Um, for me, real estate is life. Real estate is um, passion. So Nice, nice. Hope it's a question. All right, so um, my name is Toby Oshonuga. I'm the MD Chateau Royale Real Estate Limited. And we started out 2017. And on our portfolio, we have close to 19, 20 projects currently. I'm the Financial Secretary of Real Estate Developers of Nigeria, Lagos, Lagos Branch. And... Um, well, what else can I say? Ha. Real estate is life for me also. You know, I, I heard, I is it true that, I heard that the richest people in the world have a huge amount of real estate portfolio? That's uh, right. That's it's correct. edge against inflation mm. and mm. it's an edge against inflation. So yeah. it's a store of value and is is a form of wealth transfer. Mm. Yeah, it's a form of wealth transfer. So regardless of whatever you do, I was, I think um, Akinabi was saying something this morning. He said, Everybody, wherever you find yourself, go and check. You still have to come back to real estate. If you must be wealthy, that's the truth, and that's it. That's the truth. So I think to be a, please. Eh? <laughs> we want to we want to know a little bit more of um, kind of the ins and outs of this uh, real estate sector because a lot of people are, are abroad right now. Thinking, you know, they've seen a lot of real estate development going on in Lagos, in Abuja, and these other areas, and. It's they're always thinking, okay, like when you see the prices, there's always different offers, there's payment plans, prices are exp Lagos prices are expensive, right? Mm. So what, do you feel those numbers are inflated? How, what, what's your feeling about the actual prices of these properties in especially like the island areas? Okay, thank you for that question. Um value is um, relative. That's the first thing. So what you say is expensive to some people is actually dead cheap. Yeah. So, but if you look at it holistically, what is responsible for the pricing? You know, um, it's a shortage of um, supply. <laughs> so once there's a shortage of supply, you can expect that um, demand will always drive prices up. And then the uh, business environment, the operating environment, you know, cost of constructions, cost of lands, cost of permits, cost of this, cost of that. So invariably, every cost is you know passed transfer, to the end, yeah. transferred to the end user. Yeah. So that that's why the prices are like that. Uh, but I don't see them going down. No, but for <laughs> me, yeah, I, the, the biggest problem I have is you see a, like a very beautiful house in a in a, in a good location, 
But then when you look at the roads to that place, it's just so bad. It's like like it doesn't for, for us. It doesn't How really do justify. That? Yeah, that's, ah, there's places that you go. That's, 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 that's a government failure, though. That's not. That doesn't have anything to do. No, with no, the but as, the, as as people involved in the real estate, developers or people involved in that sector, you must have a body that you speak to. Second, so this is affecting the prices of the houses, like because and I would not want to live in a place that the road to get there is not good. So interestingly, right? You know, um, you could say that is government. We could say is private, but realistically. Government can't do it all by themselves, and um, the private inv- um, private practitioners, like developers, also can't do it all by themselves. So now the thing is, this we have to come to a point of collaborative. Um, we have to come to a point of exactly. Agreement. That's what I'm talking but about. But it doesn't happen that way. Now let's assume like um, you have a project currently going on in um, Lucky Face One. It's already a built up area. So if you are expecting your LCDA to come and do your road, you are likely to wait for a very long time because the guy cannot even remember the road exists. So if you are a developer that is on that road, so you have to find your way to do the road. Do you understand? So you, that, you're you not did, starting from scratch. So, so you, the developer, has to do the road. Is that, is that yeah. what you mean? Yeah, yeah most yes. times. Most, most times. times. Yeah. Yes, there are several projects I'm currently, we are currently involved in. Mm. We developers have to come together and do it. Mm. Dude, because I heard it, somebody told me one thing that let's say, for example, that you want to go and do a road somewhere, yeah, the government will tell you that ah, to do this road, you have to use our own contractor to do the road. No, those are conversations you can have, it's mm. not, it's not, it's not a straight, it's not a straightforward uh, thing, not, okay. Yeah. So, but, but depending you guys... on the LCDA local government area, you find yourself, mm. those are conversations you could have with the local authorities in that access, mm. you know, most times also. The way people say things is sometimes it's not like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. people could just yeah. hype things out of yeah, order, exaggerate, yeah, exaggerate out of order. So, and um, that causes a lot of chaos, you know. Really? Yeah, you know. Yes. Because uh, it's, not mm-hmm. yeah, you know, it's not true. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's not true. Yeah, it's not true. Yeah. So, Toby, I have got a quick question. Just tell me a little bit of how you, because what you built is quite good, right? And uh, I looked at the website. Uh, we've had a couple of conversations before. And people that are kind of aspiring to build something similar, how did you go across the starts in that area? How did you begin? Um, it was very easy for me because uh, I'm a second generation real estate practitioner. My dad was a child surveyor. Mm. So that's, you know, right from being a child, going to the man's office, you know, going to sites and all of those things. So it was quite easy for me. Uh, I started my career in investment banking, funny enough. Um, but after a while, I got tired and I was like, so what's the next thing for me? And I realized that real estate was a passion. And so it was just, uh, it was very easy for me to transition into doing real estate full time. Uh, cause I wasn't coming from zero. Mm-hmm. I already had a base. I already have like history behind me. I already had like a strong support system. So, and, um, but for those that, you know, want to come into doing what we're doing, uh, there's a lot of material out there. Uh, luckily for them, there is no barrier to entry, <laughs> which is yeah. one of the, which is one of the challenges, you know. So, but there's a lot of material out there, you know. You have to understand what you're trying to do. Um, look at people like us that have been doing it. What are we not doing right? You can come in with um, maybe a niche approach or a way to sort of like uniquely position yourself. So yeah, it's it's hoping you know you can come in. Hmm, interesting, mm. interesting. Huh? So in your projects, do you normally buy the land or do you do more of like joint venture transactions? Right, so we just buy the land. You buy the land yeah. and develop in the land yeah. yourself? Yeah, we yeah. just buy the land. Yeah. Does that kind of, because I know that land is is a significant amount of investment, right? When you buy land and then obviously it, it goes up in value. Yeah. Do you feel like, do you feel like in certain areas, if you buy a land in certain areas and over like three or four years, the the value increase more than actually building on that land compared to the investment goes into that land? So it depends on um, the um, access you find yourself. Mm. Right? So the way you even buy the land is um, you don't pay outright, like the entry right Interesting. now. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, you don't pay outright. So like currently I just launched three projects. One of the projects is 300 plots. That's massive. Mm. So if... Um, if the landowner requests for that 300 plus money from me, I can't, I can't, even if I break the bank, it's a lot for me. Mm. So we have an agreement, then we, we stick to it. So we've done it over time and we've done it over 15 projects. So I think mm. doing it again is not, it's, it's, not, not, it's, not, it's not a big deal. Yeah. yeah. 
And interestingly for us, we sell out that land in six months. So we don't have that four years to sell that land. Mm. Mm. Like we don't have that four years. So you're selling out in six months? In six months. Now, we, are, we are sold out and we've moved. So, mm. so I've, I've never had any project I stayed on for a year. But which access was... The- so that majorly... So I, I, we attend to the the middle, lower class of the of the Kedah. Mm-hmm. So that's the Bejileki, Ekwe. And mm-hmm. those are the places that massively open up right now. Mm. Yeah. And the investment that are coming there in the next few years are mind-blowing. So the earliest time to get involved in that corridor is five mm-hmm. years ago. Mm. And the best time is right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, like like yeah. most real estate. So, for, I mean, I'm always worried about flooding and like the proximity to the to the water, right? Because I went to, to a beach recently, which was, a development was going on so close to the beach, where you can see the water literally coming to the land and chipping away mm. land off, especially in that Ibejuleki access area, right? Um, so I wanted to just, you to talk to me about, like, do you guys ever get worried about that? Like, do you think those areas are going to be underwater soon? And what's going on? No, so currently, right, so even by approvals and layouts, you know that from the ocean beat, from the ocean side or the lagoon side, there are um, boundary line mm. that have already been stipulated by state government, local government, and federal government. So when you are... When you leave those lines, there's no you are not likely to have an overflow. But mm. you've you have an overflow into any project when the person has gone out of those boundaries. At least I've been in that corridor for over five years right now. So I know I can tell you all the villages from Eleko Junction down to Lakapine. I know all of them by you understand, mm. by name, by village, even their village head, I know. But the thing is this, once you go outside your boundary line, mm. you're likely to have that issue. So that particular axis does not have that kind of flooding issue. Because go and check, the boundary line is covered by um, the villagers. Most times. Oh, the most villagers times, are living there. Yeah, most times. Mm. Most times it's the villagers. So there's but a, there's on a the place other called, lagoon too, is also... Yeah. There's a place called Lafaji Town, you know there. Lafaji. Yeah. Lafaji. That's um Oh you mean Lafiaji? Lafiaji. Yeah, sorry. So Lafiaji. Yeah, that's Lafiaji. Yeah. So if there's a beach at the end, mm. yes. Right? A vista area, that area yeah, there. And yeah. if you go on that beach, that's where we see... have Koplag. Yeah, Koplag, Koplag. Yeah. 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 You can see those uh, those buildings actually coming down because of the water is coming closer to the edge. So you mean those all those buildings that are on the line? So go and check, they are likely on the line. Yeah, and you know that the, the coastal line. road yes. also passes that place. Yes. Mm. Which they've not done. The coastal road passes that place. Mm. So even if you're on the line, don't worry, coastal road will clear you off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's you understand? Mm. You know, a lot of coastal people don't get approvals before yeah. they start constructing. Okay, yeah. so this is the good this is a good question. So what are these approvals? Because I see stuff like C of O, deed of assignment, all, all these the different title. Yeah. Title, all these yeah. different So that's titling. Yeah. That's different, different, different from, from approval. Title approval. is yeah. different from getting approval. Mm. So if you're talking well, it's about a is a record site to yeah. get an approval. So depending on the title of so for me, if you're buying a land, mm. few questions you need to ask. What's the status of the land? Yeah. There's no land in Lagos that doesn't have status. They will tell you what it is. And you can verify them from Lagos State Ministry of Land Bureau. You can check it out in Survey General's office. Lagos is structured, I mm. can tell you. Regardless of whatever you read on the on the internet or whatever, Lagos is very structured. We have things in place properly. Do you understand? We have we have things in we have we figured out ourselves in Lagos. So mm. if you're going to buy a land, just know the status of that land. Few status. Um, power before 1978, maybe you have the deed of conveyance on the mainland. You see that more in Ibute Meta Yaba Alagomeji. Um, Pangroove, uh, Pangroove, Ilukbeju, you see, did of sublis, Ketsu, Alakbere, Kurudu, um, some part of so power before 1978, you have did of conveyance, mm. but with the advent of 1978, That's March, land use act, the land use act was enacted that mm. states that all the land in a state is, um, the governor of the state is the custodian of all lands, mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So if it's a custodian of all land, then you need to verify from them the status of those lands. 
But that doesn't knock off the deed of conveyance because if you have had the deed of conveyance, you, you are you are on one side. Why, if before 1970 you don't have any title on it, mm. the government, everything is in trust of the governor. Mm. It was 1970 that gave birth to a session, gazette, and the rest, mm. right? So when you say something is excised, meaning that it's a whole, but a part has been released back to the to the community. Oh, so okay. it's a community that has a session. So that's why you don't see a session in people's names. You see a session in in village name. Mm. And when you now want to see the gazette, you now see the gazette. So the gazette is a government publication on that decision that this particular land, we don't have any interest on it. It's been released to so 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 village. Yeah. This so so community. Then it's just it's just to it's just a double it's just a double consent on it that mm. okay, this particular land has been excised and we've publicized it that it's gazetted. Then you can go ahead and do maybe if you buy stuff line like that, you can decide to go and do your because it's gazetted, you can just move into your governance council. Okay, just to give a, a background and perspective to that. So yeah. pretty much what the Land Use Act of nineteen seventy eight says is that all the land, you know, in the country belongs to the people of the country, mm -hmm. but under the custodian of the, of governor, the governor. Of that state. And the background is that there were people that had been on that land before that law. So a lot of the families went back to the government to say, listen, governments, our forefathers have been here for 1,000 years. Mm -hmm. You can't just, you know, come and take over all our land. Yeah. So we need our land back. So what mm -hmm. the government do most times is that they won't give them all the land back. They will excise mm -hmm. some to them, They'll which is where, which mm -hmm. is where the excision comes comes in. Comes in. Okay. And then after they excise that, the only way that the government can actually say that they've done this is by gazetting it. So mm -hmm. they publish it in the gazette to say, so okay, see the this you know number of hectares has mm -hmm. been excised mm -hmm. to this you know family mm -hmm. or to this uh, village. Mm -hmm. So that way, you know that okay, you can deal with this particular family mm. yeah. based on this land. Have you guys yeah, have that. you guys ever had a land dispute that you have lost? And if you have, let's hear the story. <laughs> you know, as far as you're a developer in Lagos, you have <laughs> you have <laughs> funny stories. <laughs> yeah, you have funny stories. I want to hear them, please. <laughs> yeah, interestingly, right? Um, twenty, I think twenty seventeen. Um, there was one particular land around. Um, I won't mention the precise village. So, mm. so. The land has a sea of all, interestingly. The land has a sea of all. But the owner, and interestingly, the Land Use Act also has some caveat around them. If your land has a sea of all, whatever, and you've not been on that land for, I think, 10 or 20 years. Yes, so. depend on the area. Depending some areas the area. are 10 years, some yeah. are 5, mm. some so, are 20. <laughs> so if you've, if you've not taken physical possession, possession. of that land, yes. and somebody has built house on, on that land, the land yeah. on that land, you've lost... That land mm. is it, but does it have to be in a period of time in that five? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. No, so yeah, I, yeah, I can't yeah. remember. Maybe ten or so. It depends. But it depends, but yeah. I think yeah, it depends. Yeah. So depends. You have a time frame for you to take over. Mm. If you don't do that and somebody else take over, it's gone. Hmm. I need to go check my land. Though. Even <laughs> even the law cannot help you in time yeah, like yes. that. So you because need to take possession of. So you need mm. to take yeah. possession. If so you there say are it's steps. Yours, it's not just about paying money and yeah, going yeah. to. As far as it is yours, of, if it's yeah. yours, take take possession. Mm. It's physical possession that even give you rights. More no, rights. No, even if yes. you even if you come within that five years, let's assume five years, you come within that five years, and the person has built a house on it, you don't have the right to even demolish it. Huh. Yeah, the law the law forbids you. So because what were you when you was building? So in that situation, like in your situation now, what happened? How did you go across? So it? so so we wanted to buy land, so they've taken us to the land. So the guy has a C of O. Apparently he has not been in the country for like ten years. So he just came, the dad has died, so they wheeled the land to him and whatever. I think he happens to be the only son. So they wheeled the land to him. So he just say, Okay, let me go and take over the land. And when he got there, Half of the land is a built-up area. I mean, <laughs> built-up, two two-story building, three three-story building everywhere. Wow, wow! The guy got furious. Go hand me, go everybody to go jump on the side. This, this, this. So we didn't know that was happening. So he now wanted to sell some part of the land also to us. You would have seen the buildings there now. No, no, the other part, okay, not the structure mm. where we mm. have the structure. They still have some part of it. That yeah, yeah, yeah that is yeah. free. So we got there, and the people that is. That have built on the other, yeah. that are the clue. 
They chased us out of the land. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> they said they've not seen him before. He's an imposter. He's a this. He's a that. Before you say Jack, <laughs> police came to carry all of us from Area J Police Station in Ajao. Mm. I was there till evening. How? Even on top of his land. The, if you chat it, it's showing his his name. Mm -hmm. The seal, the original seal is in is is with him. It's not mm -hmm. a photocopy. Mm -hmm. So things happen, right? So if you don't take physical possession, also it's trouble. It's not, yeah, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. yeah. No, there's so much, so much to unpack there. Anyway, to be, <laughs> I, 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 there, there, there's this thinking, right? That there's, so as a buyer or a renter that's trying to get into the, trying to buy something, rent something in the Nigerian market, what are some of the tactics, let's say sneaky tactics that, that the guys in the industry does that the, the buyer should be aware of? Because a lot of time people are scared. They don't. They don't know. Like I'll, I'll tell you the first one that comes to mind. Go ahead. This this one is one that cracks me up all the time. <laughs> you know, real estate professionals go to the UK, you go to the US, and they tell you they are selling your land in Lake Face too. Yeah. And in your head, you are thinking that Lake Face is, is beside Lake Face one. Not knowing that Lake Face is my brother. Lake Face is my brother. This one. Brother, this one. <laughs> <laughs> and then you come out a lot of money yeah. and then you come to Nigeria thinking that oh <laughs> my house will be off Admiralty yeah yeah but, but you're literally there around this area that area they will take you up down, down 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 so that's that one is, shout is to, always shout, happening shout out to Landway they did that to me <laughs> <laughs> you know <clears throat> so I, I think it's important who you go with who mm. you talk to mm -hmm. you know I always advise most people that use referrals Use referrals in the sense that you know that somebody has done business with this person before mm. and you know they can hold them, you know where they are. Well, yeah, you know, right. don't just you know see somebody random, you know, talking big mm. talks and not. And then one thing I also realized about Nigerians, both the ones abroad and the ones here, we don't do due diligence. But due diligence is hard because there's no enough. It's not hard. Mm. It's not hard. It, it, we don't do due diligence. You, want to, you, want you to don't pay. want to pay. That's yeah. why. You don't want to pay. That's why you don't want to do diligence. You don't want to pay. <laughs> and it's you not even a lot of money. We lack, we lack the fact that, oh, I know somebody that can do that. You don't want to pay professionals yeah. to do a thorough yeah. job. Exactly. Because yeah. you don't want to pay a fee. A fee of maybe 100K, 200K. 200K that would have that will save you yeah. 10 million, 20, 20 million. million. Yeah. You don't want to pay. You just jump into it. And later you say, oh, they do pay. You're mm. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so no, when I when I was getting my land, I, I found this guy, Omonile Lawyer, because I had a few friends that got duped in that kind of situation where they bought land and then mm. Omonile came to say that they owned the land. So then I kind of, his service was like 70k. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you're right, it doesn't cost that it much to pay much. extra. Yeah. It's just that when you buy things here, you pay what you need to pay, then there's lots of fees that you need to pay. Yes. And that's what sometimes people are like, okay, I'm really paying all these fees. So all this small money, mm -hmm. it adds up. But it's worth it, Sha, because... Are there... Yeah, and, and that's another thing. Are there people out there... Because this is an example, like, you just bought a land, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, most majority of us have your own lands, but mm -hmm. some of them are not being built right now. They're not, not being built up. Mm -hmm. Are there companies out there that can, that can take that land from you and maybe do some farming in the meantime so you don't lose the land or... Is there the business like that? So majorly, right? Mm. If you're buying from a well-structured environment like um like ours, yeah. you don't need to build. You, I sold land to people 2018, 2019. You don't need to build. You don't need to farm there. He's faced out. Mm -hmm. He's gated. I have a security there. Mm. So there's no agitation. There's no money le wala. That's why you buy from, like he said, buy from a referral. Mm. Buy from somebody that no road. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I was using a slang yesterday. I said, follow person with no road. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Yeah, follow person with no road. Because so that when things are down. Okay, let me start an example. 2018, 2019, we sold. I sold the land to one woman. She only saw the land once. And the son had not been to the country like 15 years. So interestingly, that woman put the son as the nest of king. So unfortunately, the woman passed. Hmm. Oh, and the son doesn't even know where to. to. <laughs> no, so unfortunately, this, the the woman passed. But like, play, she had told the son, "Oh, I bought so 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 in my name." This, this. Okay, no problem. So last year, that was twenty twenty one, right? Mm -hmm. the, the guy contacted us because we don't know him, so he has to provide us with the woman's death certificate and yes. whatever, whatever, whatever. He provided, it, and we handed over the mother's plot to him. To 
Yes. Wow. That's, so, that's, that's, that's when you deal with organized... So um, if you don't deal with people that organized um, company mm. or people that you can trust, you have issues. That's why you now hear they duped me. Mm -hmm. They duped you. You can't deal with people like me and say that I'm duping you. Because I'm here. I go to site. If you come to my office, mm -hmm. you see me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our office structure has been there for since 2018. We've not moved. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's, it's very important. It's very key to deal still with follow this due to reputable, yes, yes. reputable companies that are there and are trustworthy. You mm -hmm. can check their testimonials. It can speak for themselves. And then a lot of times, you know, um, there's this saying that whatever looks good, too good to be true is probably too good to be true. Yeah. You know, you go to an area where they are selling land for a hundred million and somebody offers you land for 20 50 million, million mm. or 20 million. You need to ask, Check. you yeah. need to wonder why is this different? What, what is happening? Which is what happens most times. Mm. And then, you know, people end up getting duped. So you talked about people doing that due diligence. How, how would you advise somebody who is kind of Maybe not in the country, but it was people in the country as well. How would they do a good due diligence on, on what they're simple. buying? Do fiscal, okay. do fiscal sighting. Go there physically. Mm. Pick a surveyor to go with you. The surveyor will cost maybe 50k. Mm. Go with the surveyor. And get a lawyer as well. And get it. So I think when the surveyor has done his uh, due diligence, hand it over to a lawyer. Let the lawyer do the second leg at Alausa for you. Mm -hmm. They know who and who to call. Let them do that. Once mm. that is done, and not just allow us as well, also in the courts to make sure that there's no there are no litigation there are no, court, on, no this. litigation mm. on, the, on yes. the land. And yes. to add to mm. it, I just I just learned that also as I was growing up in the business. Ask the people around. around. That's the major security. Mm. Ask the people. What around. kind of questions? Like, has anybody come oh, sorry, here? No, no, sorry, who owns that land? Mm. Don't ask one person. Ask like ten. Just drive there. Mm -hmm. When they've shown you they've left, go back mm. there. Ask around. Oh, sorry, who owns this land? Oh, sorry, who owns this land? Oh, sorry, who owns this land? Because through those conversations, I was I was almost in I several. I have several issues in my head. Hmm. There was one. <laughs> they told us uh, we've gone there four times. Hmm. So to go and pay, somebody just said I should involve our lawyer. So I just mm -hmm. oh lawyer, we're we'll buying so 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 and so so, so place. Call, it's, oh, I hey, thank God I know the Bashan of that village. Mm. He called the Bashan. The said, okay, I should come and see him. The Bashan took me to the KBC. Immediately, hey, KBC, did, did, did. oh, we want to buy so I said, eh? It's not their land, though. Hmm. Hmm. The land belongs to a prominent. The person is still a deputy governor in this nation till now. Wow. That's how I would have bought the land of a deputy governor. And I will not be <laughs> how, do you, how do you fight a deputy governor? <laughs> do you understand? Over his own no, land. But... <laughs> Someone boy like me. I'll, they'll just tell me, but let go and sit down. <laughs> and there's not practically yes, nothing I can do. Yes. So stuff like that is mm, there. The other one, we bought the land. We've gone there like six times. They've shown us. They've shown us. So, they've shown us. So after we've paid, they now said the land starts 33 plots from the express. Wow. Ha. <laughs> that's that's my and we've paid over 25 million. Wow, well, so that money is uh, just gone. I'm not, 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 yeah, not, 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 so, yeah, I wanted to ask because the due diligence beforehand is very helpful, but just based on what you mentioned, at the very least, you should fence, always fence your land after you bought it. Is that yeah, the advice yeah, that's, that you give Yeah, that's people? taking possession yeah, of the take, land. That's, that's yes. part of taking physical yeah, possession yeah, of the yeah. land. And then put a security there or put a container there if you don't have one. But I think if you bought yeah. from a real estate developer, mm -hmm. you don't have all those to contend with anyway, unless you are buying maybe randomly. Mm. Because if you are buying from a real estate developer, they should have a structure in place. Yes. Possibly to fence out the estate, to get it out, to put the security there, mm -hmm. to help you clean up. If there's any need and pass you the bill, maybe at the end of the year and stuff like that. But if you are not buying randomly, fence it, get it immediately. Mm. Mm. In the process of fencing, if there's a contention, somebody will come up. Mm. So one of the other things we've done as 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 ourselves is that when we are getting involved in any project, we have a moratorium before we give you money. 
Because we don't want to go and give people's mm -hmm. money to you, mm -hmm. and you'll be nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. In this era of jackpot, <laughs> has anybody jackpot the way with your money? Yeah. Has anybody jackpot the way? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I can't say I'm too smart, but uh, I say that God's, uh, God, God is, God is, God is yeah. <laughs> I, I also wanted to really ask a question about the quality of the way real estate is constructed here, because from my experience, you know, looking from my own place, like you see some structures that you don't even know if they were safety was conducted on the property. You don't even know if sometimes access to clean water is still a luxury. So I wanted to know what your thoughts are. On why do you think that it's very common, you know, on Lagos that we see? I think I should, I should take that. You should take that. Yeah. yeah. yeah I should, I, it's coming to you, but I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of factors responsible for okay. it. Uh, I think um, one of the key ones is that because the industry is not really regulated, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are just jumping into business just to make money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you find people that are, you know, usually traders that already have a certain markup they make from selling a product, building houses, it's that same mindset that they transfer to building houses because they don't want to lose money. Mm. And a lot of times, because of what we are even experiencing in the economy right now, you know, you've set out to do a project at a certain cost, but you know, the market has moved against you and you can't transfer that cost, then definitely you have to transfer to the quality mm -hmm. so that you can deliver. So, so many factors are responsible for that, which is why you need to be careful who you are doing business with. Some, some companies would rather lose money just to protect their name and just to remain in business than just to make profits. Mm. So it's very, very important that you talk to the right people, yeah. know who you are going into business with, look at the projects they've done, look at their past projects. And from there, you can verify if you know they'll deliver quality or not. Yeah. So that's that's the mm. key reason why. My, my biggest issue with quality is the, the toilet situation. <laughs> <laughs> why? why? Why are toilets in these buildings not good? A lot of the time, either they're too small, the doors are not closing, you're talking to the sink, it's like... It doesn't... <laughs> <laughs> it where you be doing. You've been going to Ajay Bile, profit over people. That's really? the no, 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 but yeah. the yeah. house we built for the toilet would just be bad. Why? And, and that's another thing I wanted to ask, because you have developments. Sometimes the development is one aspect, but who does the managing of the property afterwards? Because I've seen estates yeah. struggle a lot with that aspect as well. There's some estates that residents now do their own electricity, their own gas, their own water treatment. So what experience have you had in passing management over to people? Are All right, so not? I think, um, let me just take a little from what you said earlier. Now that, as far as Lagos State is concerned right now, there's a whole lot of structures put in place for building approvals even from um you being called a developer now we have the lacera lagos state uh, reg um, registration we have the real estate developers of nigeria so there are a lot of um organized association that has been deliberately put in place by the state government to make sure that we cop down the event of building collapse and whatever and it's on the increase right now that we are too deliberate and um, there was an event that happened like three two weeks ago in oriental and um, we have practically all the um power starters in the built industry in lagos state they were there and it was it was a mind-blowing session where we had all the developers also in lagos the thing is this so they are deliberate effort in making sure that things are seen now, Lagos State is, even in landmass, I think it's the smallest on landmass, but it's the most populated in Nigeria. So the government are seriously doing a whole lot to put structures in place so that it's safe for all. Because mm. there's no there's no joke when when a building collapses and you lose somebody there. Mm -hmm. It's it's not just for the developer, it's also a stain on the state government that they are not doing things mm. well. But they've been serious, deliberate effort from the lower level to the higher level to make sure that things are done right. So mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of work going, going on. on. And, and I want to call on everybody that is also in that beauty industry, from developers to realtors to whatever. Let's join us together to, to get... It can only go, but get better. Mm. And it takes us. The government can't do it all by themselves. And even the private practitioners that can't do it all by themselves. So, so what are the measures? Because, I mean, right now, I know a lot of people are so scared of high-rise building Lagos. Like, everybody is scared, right? What are these measures that the, that you, you got that developers are actually taking to ensure that those things are safe, irrespective of what the government is so like it's, individually? It's, yeah, so it's majorly approvals. So if I'm going to buy any high-rise right now, I'll have to check your approvals now. 
Mm. If you don't have approvals, there are some, there are so many structures that has come down in this country, they will have approval for it. They are going on 13th floor. Go and check. The, um, the soil test only show you you can go eight. That's why you submitted to the state government and the um, the uh, approval agency agencies. Mm. Now, because you sold more than eight floor, you now added another three or four out of your own volition. It will come down because when you were building that structure, Mm. your your structural um the structural stuff you put in place from down cannot support 13 it can only support eight mm. so if you've gone further that means that there's yes. there's likely so to be impending the, trouble the, the there's a whole lot of risk. load yeah. you are putting on something that doesn't okay mm. let me cite an example you carry you carry um a corolla and you want to run a race of a land cruiser a point will come as you are firing it it can only deliver to the size of a corolla come on mm. and if you fire the thing too much it will just stop mm. it will so, just, so it just... goes back to what i've been saying that um most of because you know the regulation is coming in but it's not yeah. catching up as fast as it should uh most of the people are in the business to make profit there's a lot of money to be made in the real estate yeah, and true. when you have people that are prioritizing profit over lives this is what happens. So for me, what I've suggested in the past is that there should be what we call like a, a peer engagement, not just government. So government agency is there to do their work, but they've been failing, obviously. Why can't we have like a peer, like, you know, the Real Estate Development Association of Nigeria? They, they, those, those are peer, you understand, groups. Yeah, they're currently, they're that, currently. That can do like their own independent, you know, mm. you can have whistleblowers, you know, mm. you can you can partner with uh, realtors well, that, yeah. or if you see anything that you think is not, you know, Tell us, tell this association, let the association send their own parties. So there are ways around it. And I totally agree with you. We can't leave it all to governments. Yeah, true. Government is us. <laughs> government is comprising of people. I believe in you know? that. Yeah. So we have to look for creative ways where we can also do our own independent investigation and save lives. Yes. You can't keep prioritizing profit over people. Yeah. And because... Because people are getting away with it, just like they get away with everything. That's why you can't stop. Mm. You know, somebody builds a building, they think collapses, kills people, he's not in jail. Wow. Rather, he's getting national awards. So how do you discourage people? Mm. You know? So, so, I mean, if people are coming to Nigeria or people in Nigeria want to rent a place now, what are the top five things? You can go eat, right? You know, if you can take this. What are the top five things that they should check? As a renter, for, for is it for is it for to stay in as short let or for rentals? No, to stay in as, you, as your like own a, place. So you want to come and stay. No, in you must rent. you must stay in a very um in, you must stay in a gated environment anyway. For me first, mm. that's key. You must stay in. If how long are you staying? You know, most people that come from the abroad, <laughs> when when they get in, they don't want to stay with family members. Mm. So that they don't get redded, you know. <laughs> and, you know <laughs> I had somebody that came in a few weeks ago. He said, I don't know, he has not been in the country for like 17 years and just came in. He only has one number. And he realized that everybody has passed the number, number around. <laughs> so he can't even disclose where he's staying. <laughs> you understand? So, but most importantly, stay where he's safe. And interestingly, Lagos is relatively not too bad for our security, but you have to also be security mm. conscious. You can't get it. All perfected. Stay in a gated environment. Know the person, the building, the owner of the whosoever building you are, you are staying. And I think for me that's key first. I won't go to mm. five. That's key. Stay in a gated. For environment me, I think I can get to five um, because we have quite a number of apartments that we manage. And like I always tell people, I'm a landlord, I'm a tenant. Mm. So I see things from both Upside, perspective yeah. you understand mm -hmm. so i think like you said security the neighborhood where you live in you know make sure it's gated it's secure mm -hmm. and um also check the facilities mm -hmm. is there water is there power exactly. water you know, all of those kind of <laughs> this is <laughs> let me talk about water for one minute <laughs> why is the it's, water it's very important I then, 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 bad then, water. <laughs> then then also you know you need to ask the existing tenants yeah. their experience mm -hmm. yeah. You know that's that's a good place 
this place to start mm -hmm. you know check check you know with the existing tenants what what's the experience like living here mm -hmm. and you know they would give you first-hand insights you know so you know if it's something that they're about to run for mm -hmm. that you're getting into and then also who is handling the process for you who is the real estate company handling the process for you are they people that you can trust you know if anything goes wrong would they be there for you mm -hmm. and all those, those kind of things and then again you have to get somebody involved somebody that has experience you know mm. go with a friend go with whatever it is let them check that property for you is there rising dam you know is there mold you know all those kind of things that you might not be able to see but mm. from their own experience if you take me to a building right now i can already tell you that this one you're I'm going to run good. out of this place in three months <laughs> wow. I yeah. yeah we need you like you in the beginning well, when we first moved because <laughs> i had bad water experience i've had bad electricity and, you know I would go back to your question on facility management. Yeah. Sometimes it's usually not the facility manager's fault. Okay. There are a lot of things responsible, you know. Mm. Owners of properties, you know, developers, they spend millions, millions mm. on water. And, you know, someone has come out of a property, you know, after two years. Messed the, it up. The, no, the bowl even breaks down. And then the question is now, Oh, should you go and call the developer back? Oh, the new owners, there are about 20 something of them that are just collecting rent. Even their rent is not enough to pay for their children's school fees. You're not asking them to come and pay for. That is usually where the problem is. Oh, I'm a tenant. I'm going to move out of this place. Don't charge me extra for a bowl that I will not use for more than six months. You know, so you have so many dimensions mm. to this thing, which is why from get-go, those things must be spelled out. Mm. If the developer is handing over the building to the buyers, you know, to the subscribers, you tell them that this building I'm handing over to you, I have six months to fix whatever comes up. Anything after six months, please don't call me again. Then the guys that are, you know, buying, you know, they have a duty to their tenants or to the facility manager to say, okay, if there's anything that happens to the roof, you can call me. If there's anything that happens to the mm -hmm. borehole, you can call me. But if there's anything that has to do with the internal, don't call me, you know. So, which is why it's very important that you sign tenancy agreements. Mm. That will show each and every person's responsibility, who is responsible for what. Mm. But there are situations where things do happen that are not captured in the tenancy agreement, mm. which is where the human factor comes in. You know, you look at some situations like, okay, if this was me, how would I react? How can I? So, you know, one of the issues that I've realized that is a problem is that people don't trust each other. Yeah. Mm. You assume that everybody's a thief. Mm. And because you're, you're, you know, you're going into a meeting with that perception that, oh, this landlord is a thief. You're already going there, not even listening to his own side of the story, not knowing how much he has spent on the people that lived there before you came in, not even having an idea whether the guy has any ROI on his investment. So I think that trust is is just give people a bit of benefit of that hear them out listen to the situation and then find a solution mm. you know i'll just give you a personal experience now mm. where i live is a community all of a sudden i wanted to buy electricity earlier this week and i just noticed i couldn't buy electricity ah and i was wondering what's going on and then i called the facility management office i'm like why can't i buy electricity they said your landlord is owing asset replacement charge wow. I didn't mm. even know about anything called asset replacement charge. Mm. And then I called my landlord and said, ah, guy, because it's my friend, uh, you're owing asset replacement <laughs> charge. The guy said, no, I paid. Wow. Ah, truly, he has paid. Mm. But guess what? The asset replacement charge is about maybe one, 1. 1.5 million. By, by year? It's not by year. It's just like 1.5 million for whatever period. Mm. And there's now some little extra, like maybe penalties because he didn't pay when he was oh, supposed to pay. Okay. So the thing had accrued to like 1.5 million, 50,000 era. Mm, so the 50, so guess what? Era. The guy paid 1.5. So because of 50,000 era, everybody I, couldn't, down. I couldn't buy electricity. So imagine a situation like that. So would I now say, oh, guy, you, you have to pay 1.5 million. I have mm. to pay that 50,000 era. Wow. Because I need to buy electricity. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that you face in, you know, in situations like this. So do I blame the guy that has paid his 1.5 million asset replacement? Even me, I feel for the guy. How much is his rent annually? How much did he buy the building? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. No. So you need to really get to the bottom of things. Mm -hmm. And which is why I always tell people that choose the people that you are going into business with. Choose the properties that you ask about the facility management company. Where and where are they running their facilities right now? You don't even have to go to that particular problem. If you go to a site, those ones can tell you that. Those ones, they don't know anything. So those are some, you need to really ask those kind of questions to make sure that you're not getting to a place that, you know, you're stuck. 
Mm, that's very true. No, that, that's, that's very helpful. Yeah. So you want to do trivia? Yeah, let's do trivia. Um, can I can have my favorite favorite. But before she does the trivia question now, there's two questions I want to ask. One thing is Thank you. about Nigeria. What's one good thing that you like about Nigeria as a country? You can take them in turns, but one good thing. They like say, you know, this can't fault this. I think for Nigeria, we are we can weather anything. For us in this country, we can weather anything. Regardless of whatever it is, we, we find a way to weather it. I think that's one thing for me for Nigerians. Mm. So I'm, you, I'm actually going to echo that. I was going to say the can same do, thing. the can do spirit. Mm. There's something about mm. about she, us. She like, talks about it all the time. And the Nigerian spirit. She calls it the Nigerian spirit. Mm. Yeah, it's it's yeah. very special, you know. Okay. And which is why a lot of time I think our strength is our weakness. Mm. Because we can withstand anything. We don't ask, ask yes. much from the people that are supposed to give us. You know, we just let them get away with anything. Because, because we we'll say that we, regardless, we'll, we'll be fine. We are we'll, always we'll fine. We'll be fine. You know, yeah. we are always fine. That's, yeah, That's the, the truth. Food, so yeah. we we don't hold people accountable because mm. we we are adaptable. We adjust. You know. We keep fighting, mm. and then our O and B too. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about you know there is, there's no party like a Lagos party. Please. Ah, <laughs> talking, talking about O and B. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So I just have five questions. How should we do it though? Because yeah, I mean you can. You have five questions so all together. I have five questions, and we'll just maybe you give your answer. You give your answer. Uh, on yeah. Each one. Okay. So the first question is: What percentage of real estate investment in Nigeria is from the diaspora? Currently, we have, um, let's say, like 60 right now. Yeah. I would say about 80. Ah. You guess, you guess it. Uh, the, the fact said 70%. Oh, okay, <laughs> so the middle. Right in the, middle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the average. Okay. What is Nigeria's housing deficit in housing units? How many units do you ah. think? So we keep getting very conflicting figures. Okay. And, um, yeah. Is it in Nigeria or Lagos? No, Nigeria. <sighs> I, I, I can't put a figure to As that. As a last check, it was 20 million. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's close because you're right. The, it was the, com, it was conflicting figures, 17, 20, but it says 28 million at the moment. Yeah, so where where did they get 28 million, million from? Million. How many people are even in the country? Come on yeah, now. The Federal Mortgage Bank uh, say that there's a 20 28 million, million as of this year. Yeah. The okay. Federal Mortgage Bank. Hmm. My question will go back. <laughs> <laughs> Who are they mortgaging? How many mortgages? <laughs> how many, did they tell you how many mortgages we have in Nigeria? No, about no, no, no. no, no. from that, about that. How many people have they mortgaged? Exactly. How many? How many people have they given facility in the last five years? Please, let's know what we are doing. <laughs> okay. Because because the thing is this, right? Um, like um um f- federal what's it called? Your national housing fund, right? Mm. So you can only have access to fifteen million naira, so they about. Now, that figure has been there for how many years ago? For over close to a decade. Now, that figure has not changed. So how many hours can you buy at 50 million now right now? Hmm. So it's not realistic, mm. what yeah, I'm so saying. We don't really know what we're doing. That's the truth. So mm. most apparently, yeah. all these things have been there. They have been put in place then because of the situation then. But the current reality does it's not different. support all of that. And how are we even having conflicting figures? Yes. When we don't even know the problem, how do we solve it? Exactly. Why are we having conflicting figures? <laughs> so you cannot, you cannot just look for a statistics and just check maybe Nigerian statistics or whatever. You are likely to be confused. Yeah. Because we are not truthful to ourselves. We are not. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have 28 million yeah, assets. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't believe so. And I'll tell you why. Mm-hmm. Let me just correct that perspective. Perspective, and you asked a very important question, which is: Is he in Lagos? Mm, yeah, a lot yes, of people no. don't have houses in Lagos. Lagos yeah. But if you get to my village right now, there are <laughs> maybe two hundred <laughs> abandoned houses. Yeah. Yes, now who wants to go and stay in the village? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So my grandfather, you... my great grandfather's house is there. My, my grandfather's, grandfather's house is there. My father's house is there. there. Mm. Same but, here. Mm. I can't remember the last time I was there. Exactly. And interestingly, they now tell me that I should come and do renovation in that same <laughs> And I was like, they ask that somebody Some goes there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so really, how, where do you get that data from? Yeah, so where do you get those data from? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what is Nigeria's home ownership rate as a percentage? Home ownership? So don't let us be confusing it. Because when you say Nigerian home ownership rate, mm-hmm. so because Lagos State is a peculiar case. Mm. 
It's not a regular case. Why I say it's not a regular case is because of the people in there. So do you know how many people flock into Lagos every one hour? Do you mm. know how do you know how many people stay in Lagos right mm. now? We are hearing 22 million, we are hearing 25 million mm. people in Lagos. So Wait, if, you were, if you were to give a guess on average, what would you say that would be? For the home ownership rate. Home ownership rate, rate yeah. Uh, I mean, Maybe 10, I, I, 15? Uh, I would go with 10 as well. Yeah, 10, 15. 10, 15, yeah. So they say we're worth quite low, but it's 25%. That's Come on. Lie, lie. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. Right. Okay. I, think, I think, Toby, we should start from here. Four of us sitting down here. How many of us are staying in the house? Uh, well, I have a home, but I'm not staying in it. I'm not I staying have in home. home. I don't stay in it. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 come but, on! But, but, but then again, you're, we're own homeowners, so it doesn't mean it doesn't mean it's wrong. No, we it's, are one of no, the no, few. No, 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 privileged no, 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 What's twenty five percent of two hundred million? <laughs> What's that? 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 million. million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think fifty million people in the whole country don't have a, uh, a property? How? Wow. Fifty mm. million people. Maybe, maybe. How okay, let's states? let's do like states? this. Consider the village they may, No, 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 no. Let's let's do like this. <laughs> now you know that there are livable houses. If you say livable houses, or oh, I just sleep and wake up, mm. maybe it's possible. But livable, conducive. Maybe. <laughs> like conducive. So, so let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I disagree with that number. Number one, 50 million is already a problem for me. Mm. You know why we cannot have 50 million homeowners in Nigeria? Even our population right now, out of that 200 million, 70% are under 25. Mm -hmm. So for me, let's not deceive ourselves. So by which the time is, you begin to do the statistics, you realize that something is, is which wrong. Which is the problem. Yeah. You know, let us come up with real numbers so mm. we can solve real problems. Mm. You know? <laughs> Sometimes when we throw out numbers, I just have my head just shut down because <laughs> there are so many things that are not very realistic. These people that are doing this uh, calculation, sorry to come in. When was the last population census done in this country? It was 2000 and some, early 2000s, wasn't it? 2006. Yeah. How many years ago? Yeah, that's a long time ago. Was that, actually, was that actually when the last census was done? Yes. Yeah, 2006. Wow. Yes. And I can say category that I was not counted. I was accounted to. <laughs> no, so I was accounted. I remember the time they came to in the house. I, saw the I was, I was accounted. accounted. They, they forgot my house. <laughs> <laughs> because I can remember 2006, I was out of university. I think so. I, I don't think they came into my university. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, university guys now, they know the same So you think Nigerian population is actually more than that 200 million no, that I was saying? No, no, no. You don't I think don't it's think more so. than that? No. <laughs> so maybe, maybe they did, maybe they are just like, okay, Plus, minus, plus yeah, they always add three percent every year now. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just, just giving us our guesswork. Exactly. Now we're adding three percent since nineteen ninety six. How many people are giving birth? How many people are even dying? Ah, in this hard so conditions. So they can't even show us. They can't even show us the death rate. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think there's he, one more. Do you right? want to take the death rate from the hospital that is not functioning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't let us go there. Mm. Okay. So there's, there's work to do, more. which is yeah. why we're not going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there's two more. So what's the most expensive or the richest square mile in Africa? What Which is what? The richest square mile in the richest square mile in Africa. What country is it in? Which is square mile? Mm. Well, in it's, it's Lagos now. It's Banana Island now. So it's Banana Island. It's actually mm. South Africa. Oh, really? <laughs> I was actually going to say Banana Island too. No, it's not. It's oh, Santon. Santon. Yeah. Aalox, Aalox com said it's Banana Island. No, no, no. It, it, the st all the stats will tell Santon. you it's Santon. Yeah, the, the richest square mile in... Mm. in yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, the last so I take one, that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to start I'm going to tell my guys to Banana Island. There's competition. Yeah, they've been knocked off. <laughs> okay, so last one. Who is rumoured to have the most expensive house in this country? In this country? I think it's Mike Adenga. I think it's my cousin got too. Yeah. So on the list he was second. Somebody else. Was Wait, hold on. Can I say? Can I just add my own? Please, I'm, I'm not getting counted. I feel okay. No, no. definitely not. Okay. Um, 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 the most expensive house. Yes. Oh, yeah. really? She's number one. Yeah. Adenigo 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 Adenigo. Yeah. yeah. And she just finished her house. So seven hundred no, million dollars. No, the yeah. the seven hundred million dollars. She just finished it now. No, the house. When did you finish the house? 
Like two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So she just she just knocked off. Oh, yeah. 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 That's good. So we filled all that trivia. I say, actually, Toby, Toby <laughs> I go got on. one out of five. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my. Okay, next time. <laughs> no, 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 I don't agree with those trivia. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, guys. No, it was fun. It was really good, man. It was really good. Thank you. Thank you for having us.